to your point about the game, yeah, that was a practice squad team, uh, which, you know, I'm sure we'll get into Mullins, but it just kind of makes it hard to evaluate. It kind of makes it hard to evaluate the team because it's like, well, that was that was a bunch of pra- literally practice squad players. So how do you evaluate Mullins? How do you evaluate really anybody, right. at least on the offensive side, when – yeah, like I said, it was, it was a practice squad. It was just – I didn't finish the game either. I actually watched the – because I stopped about midway through the third. I actually finished it today uh, just so I could see yeah, know, the, the what, two what touchdowns the at the end. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even see the last touchdown, to be quite honest with you. I saw the first one that they scored, and I'm like, all right, that's about it. Time to go eat some dinner and then call it a night. But then I, I – I found out that McKinnon scored the last touchdown there. Uh, I mean, there's there's really yeah. no true positives. I mean, I guess the one silver lining is uh, Rich, Richie James did play well, which was kind of, I mean, best receiver out there for the Niners, right? Uh, no no yeah. big surprise coming off injury. Um, he kind of looked, I mean, he touched, up, he touched on this after the game. He was like about 90% um so yeah a little rust is going to be there but the concerning thing is like players who have been here for going on four years um have been kind of hurt but still haven't contribute I'm looking at like Trent Taylor like where the hell was Trent Taylor you know like come on uh, help your quarterback out and I know Mullins didn't play well at all his offensive line try to hell up hell up like as much as they can right um school looked like he was taking a step back he played well last year but this year I don't know it seems like the team has taken at least the reserves have taken some steps back yeah that uh yeah uh Taylor I don't know I don't know what happened maybe just I don't know if that was a flash in the pan season he had in 2017. I don't know what happened, but he's got to go school. And and I think some of it is just, they reshuffled that line last second. I'm kind of, they asked Shanahan about it after. And I was just kind of like on a short week, like once Trent, you know, I mean, that was a lot of the reshuffling. They benched uh, Grassu. They that was a, on a short week. I, I realized that Grassu didn't play his best last week. Right. But I just feel like on the short week, like you have to kind of continue with as much continuity as possible. After after last night, that's when you need to change. You have what eleven days, so you have practices. Yeah. You can then kind of rearrange your line, but to do that basically at the last second, and then Williams goes out, so you have to do even more reshuffling. Like school looked terrible, but I mean, some of that to me was just on on that last second line shuffling. Like, why would you shuffle last second? on the short week, I don't, you know, you're traveling back from Seattle. Like I just, that was kind of, to me, not a smart play. I think you say that for this next or after a bye week, not, okay, we play in like, you know, three days, let's go ahead and change the continuity. Let's reshuffle everything last second. And, and against, you know, a pretty good pass rushers that the Packers have, like, and you saw the results, like school, that was, that was, that was, wow. That was, that was one of the worst, uh, I mean, he was just getting, it's just, like, yeah, a, a I mean, beat like rented. Yeah. It just, yeah. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect much anyways, but I think this just shows the lack of pursue in interior offensive line this past off season. And it's really just coming back to bite them like in the ass. I get that, you know, guys were hurt, but I mean, if you really think about it, offensive line is one of, uh, you know, relatively speaking, the one of the healthiest areas, right? The only missing yeah. piece is actually center, Weston Richburg. We don't know if he's going to play. But, yeah, it's just it just shows that they don't have, first of all, the starters are struggling. So you get, what, two backups in, one in, at left tackle, yeah, that's going to be a disaster. You might want to give him some help. And the help, Kittle being out, I don't, I'm not sure how much you can give him there. On a short week, you know, it, it's just hard. And it looked ugly. And it was ugly. Um, the fact that they were able to leave in one piece, um, being Nick Mullins, if, 
you know, the fact that he left healthy, I think was a major plus because at some point in the game, I was kind of scared for him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was, that was, he took some shots that one where he fumbled on. And I think that's actually when I turned it off when he, he took that hit fumbled. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm good here. Um, my God, like, I don't know how he got up from that, you know, good on Nick. Uh, I mean, he's tough. Uh, I'm going to give that for the Niner backup QBs. I mean, yeah. CJ can take a hit and Nick can too, but I mean, this game was that perfect. This team as it is right now, because of the injuries last year's team was so talented. They didn't have to, they never had to play a perfect game really. Right. They could win. You know, if the offense was kind of off the defense could kind of step in. You saw with the, like the Pittsburgh game, Tampa Bay, like you see that. And sometimes when the defense wasn't there, the offense could click in, like the Saints game. Like you saw, they were just so talented on both sides and relatively healthy. They didn't have to play perfect. And now you're seeing that this season, they have they have to play perfect, but they don't have the talent to do it. You saw it with the Craycraft. I mean, once that, once he dropped that touchdown, which was a dime by Mullins, that was such a beautiful pass. Best throw of the night for Mullins, yep. Once he popped, once he dropped that, I said, this game's over. Like, that was yeah. your one kind of chance. You get to tie it up 7-7. Seven, seven. Maybe you put some pressure on the backers. Once he dropped that and you're kicking the field goal, I'm like, you're, that's that's it. You're, you're done. This this game is over. And that's that that one play kind of something. That was your chance. And Craycraft, you know, I get it. He's a practice guy, but perfect pass. I mean, that was a beautiful pass. That was a perfect pass. It's like, you have to catch that. But it goes to that thing. You you have to play perfect. You have to catch that. You have to, like, this team is not talented enough with the injuries right now to survive being anything less than basically perfect. And it, it's, you're seeing if you're seeing it, you're seeing it on the field. It's crazy. Yeah. And, the, and then I think you tweeted about this um, when the Packers were just, you know, bringing pressure to Mullins. Mullins, and I think this goes to every quarterback in that room they don't know how to take sacks. Like we touched on this after the Seattle game where Jimmy was just like, sometimes you just have to live to fight another down, right? But their mentality is, you know, I'm a gunslinger. I'm just throw it up and, you know, give everybody in the field a 50-50 chance to get it. And those, you know, I feel like 90% of the time will go to the defense, right? Oh, yeah. So like, something in that quarterback room has to change where they have to play smarter. Like that, I believe at the time of that interception, that was the only interception that Nick Mullins had in the game, but they were still within range. It wasn't, you know, they weren't getting blown out at that time. It was still close. I believe it was maybe like, I want to say 14, three, maybe even closer than that. Seven, three, I forget. But I mean, those mistakes and they've happened, you know, since Kyle Shanahan has come here. It's just like, man, those are those are mistakes that you don't want to make, especially, you know, with everything happening. Th- those are things you can actually control. And so I felt like that was an area where the Niners could have improved on and they can continue to improve on that. And I like to see how they they manage to do that as the season progresses. But you know, it's just like so discouraging to see that. I'm just like, you have no shot. The guy's like right in your face. You know, you have a, a backup receiver. What are the odds that he's going to, you know, you guys are going to have some sort of timing on that route. Yeah. So I just felt like he should have ate that up and then, you know, leave it up to your defense to come up with those stops. Like that's been the constant thing. And just, like, giving your defense a shot to, you know, be the defense that they can be. Once they're behind, it's just, like, what's the point, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it was eerily reminiscent of the of the first pick he threw against the Eagles. Almost the exact same. He got hit and just kind of threw it. Just literally yeah. just – it was a pop fly. I am um, – I just – and that's the thing, like, for the most part, Mullins, when he's played this season – has played fairly well. Uh, he likes to throw it downfield, which, you know, you like to see. He gets the ball downfield, chunk plays. He He's good at that. He likes, you know, he's not really much of a dump-off guy. He's definitely a get-the-ball-down-the-field guy. You like to see that. But when he makes – when he goes derp, he goes 
all the way. He just makes, like I said, that, that Philly, the first, the two picks against Philly in this one, you, you, you're just like, dude, you have to just take that sack or throw it to the ground. You can't throw it up like that. If you're going to do that, throw it out of bounds, do something. Like, I don't know, but for Pete's sakes, like you can't throw these pop flies just, just up. If you take out like that pick yeah. and that first one against Philly, it's like, man, you, your tape looks pretty damn good <laughs> outside that second Philly pick, which was that's a whole separate issue, yeah. <laughs> but it's a pretty nice tape. And, and for Nick, like part of me feels like, dude, you're, you're kind of playing for your future contract, whether that's with the Niners or with another team. And if you put up some good film, like if you play well these next, you know, seven, seven weeks, I don't know if Jimmy's going to come back. I doubt it. But, you know, the rest of the season, someone may, you know, offer you a nice little contract. You know, you got to be kind of, I mean, I hate to say it, but you have to kind of be thinking about that. Like, dude, you're making these dumb throws. Like not only are you hurting your team, but you're hurting your wallet at the same time. Every time you throw a bad pick that doop, doop, that contract, yep, that contract comes down. Yep, every, the value every, comes down. Yep. Yeah. It's every just time. like, you know, a lot of people thought Nick Mullins could be a starter in this league, but he's proving that he isn't, you know, that kind of sucks. And I know a lot of things, again, they're going to use the excuse that, Niners are, are banged up and that's true but those like those little things minimizing those mistakes will go a yeah. long way during a season like this yeah at, at the, mistakes at some point, don't uh, you know what oh I was saying like at some point you know because the the roster so depleted they're not going to look at your your stats. They're just going to look at your film to see what you did during this time, you know? Yeah, yeah. the, the injuries don't excuse poor decision-making, right? Like, yeah. I don't care who is on them. You could have had Randy Moss, Jerry Rice, Calvin Johnson, but if you're making those throws, like, it, you know, I don't care if I was on the field or you were on the field. Like, you cannot make that throw. Like, that's just a poor, like, that is separate than a bad O-line or a bad receiver or whatever else that's just a bad decision on Nick Mullen's part. And that's the thing that, you know, kind of going to Jimmy, like we saw against Seattle, like, yes, there's injuries. Yes, he has an ankle. But part of the issue is like some of his decision-making, you question that. And that has nothing to do with the rest of it. Like that's here. And if, you know, as a coach, I'm saying, Hey, I want you to run my offense, but I don't think you have it here. I, I don't care how good your arm is. I don't care how good everything else is. If you don't have it here, it, it, it really doesn't matter. 